integrating Dastardly with Jenkins. Dastardly is a web application security scanner that is built specifically for using inside of CI CD pipelines. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a Jenkins pipeline and running Dastardly against an example site. Now, there is specific documentation at the Port Swigger site about how to integrate with Jenkins. I've taken this as the starting point for my pipeline. So let's take a look at where we're starting. I have a Jenkins controller. It's version 2.361.2. Attached to this controller, I have an agent that has Docker installed on it. Now, why Docker? In order to run dastardly, you have to have a container runtime installed. And in this case, I'm just going to use Docker. Now let's take a look at a sample repository that I've set up. Again, this is based on the official documentation from Portswigger. If we take a look at our Jenkins file, and if you were to compare this against what is in the documentation at Portswigger, they're going to look very, very similar. The only thing that I've really done is I've pulled out the variables that were hard-coded down in the Jenkins file and put them as environment variables. The reason I did this was if I want to use this for something else in the future, all I have to do is just change out these environment variables at the top and it'll apply anywhere those values were used throughout the pipeline. In this example, image with tag is used twice and also JUnit test results file is also used twice. So by abstracting that out and applying the dry principle to it, anytime I need to use this in the future for a different project, then all I need to do is change out that one value. Now let's just take a look at it. We're gonna do a pull for the image and then we're gonna run the image with a couple of values. First off, we need to mount in our workspace from the agent into the container. We need to set up our target URL. And then finally, we need to set the location for our output file along with its name. Now, in this case, what it's gonna be producing is a JUnit compatible file. And then our post always, we're going to do JUnit test results with the results of the JUnit test results file that was produced from the dastardly output file. So let's go back over into our controller and let's look at and see how this job is configured. So we'll click on configure and you can see I'm pointing at the repository. I am on the main branch and the script path is Jenkins file. So I'll just go ahead and click on save again and let's click on build now. So now that the job's finished, let's go back and scroll through what the output is. So if we go all the way back up top, what we'll see here is we're pulling in our image, the very first thing, that was our first stage. And then our second stage is when we start running our container image. Now in this case, we have some ASCII art that shows up here. Let me zoom out just a little bit so you can see that it says dastardly. And let's take a look at how it starts up. It checks a couple of endpoints until finally it's able to really start. Now at this point, the very first thing it does is it does a crawl. Well, it's crawling based on the environment variable that we set for dastardly target URL. In this case, it's ginandjuice.shop, which is a site provided by Portswigger that has some vulnerabilities in it so we can see what actually shows up in our report. So we go through, we crawl until the crawling is complete, and then we start the audit. The audit runs, and finally it's complete as well. So the crawl finished, the audit finished, and then at that point, our output file is created. We see a couple of other items that are showing here of, there are some cross-site scripting vulnerabilities here. We'll take a look at those in a little bit more detail in a moment. It does some cleanup, and then you can see that we're recording our test results, again, from the output file that was produced out of the container image. So let's go ahead and click into one, and we can see here that there were four failures. And let's click into one of our test results. Actually, let's first click into test result. We can see all the failed tests, as well as all the tests that were run. And right now, let's just go ahead and pick one of these at random. We'll pick catalog search two. And let's look and see what the information is that we have coming back to us. First off, we get an error message, cross-site scripting. And then we get a full stack trace. And notice all the information that's given to us in the stack trace. Severity, confidence, what the host was, what the path was. Then we get into issue detail. So we get a lot of detail around what's going on there. We also get issue background. Finally, the most important part, is the issue remediation. And it gives us some options of what we need to do in order to remediate this issue. And then finally, we look at the evidence. We see our request, we see our response, and then there's some extra references here and vulnerability classifications. Then at this point, we can take the data that is within our test results. We can see our failures 
that would give us information to go ahead and start working on remediating these. And then at that point, we would run dastardly again and hopefully get zero failures. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on the subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.